Owen Cameron here. We saw a world's top 32 finish in 2022, a Lille regional top four in 2022, the London Open champion in 2023, and the senior EUIC champion in 2017. And I remember that I was casting that event. That was an awful lot of fun. Absolutely. And of course, Azul Garcia Griego, Azul GG. That's all he says after every single game, usually with the victor's slip in his hand. 2022 NAIC champion, OCIC top eight back when Pedro won the whole thing in 2017. LEIC finalist and the 2016 Orlando regional champion. Just one of his five regional championships he's going to flex for us there. And he is going to be playing that lost zone box that he has been playing all season long, it feels like, trying to perfect the list. Did not go outside of Melbourne at any point in time this week. Wanted to make sure that his deck list was perfect. And I think it paid off for him here. Yeah, there's a lot of fun things to do in Melbourne. And, uh, you know, part of me is like, you should be going out and exploring the city. But then there's another part of me that's like, you know what? You made it to the top four of the international championships. Maybe you did have the best plan all the way along. Well, this is going to be a great one here. We are underway in the top four of the Oceania International Championships. And it seems like we are going to be starting with... Who's starting off? So Owen looks like starting off at Genesec being the active, quite nice. And Azul has started as their Aura, which especially in this matchup is not the tech you're really looking to start with. Yeah, this Pokemon can soften up and deal a decent amount of damage occasionally, but usually you try to work that in in the middle stages of the game when you're trying to uh, take one of those uh, early prize cards. Then, of course, we work on the larger strategy for Azul, which is going to be that Drapion V in combination with the Sky Seal Stone on a Mew V Max for four prize cards. So look to see Azul trying to uh, get two early prize cards in this match and then find those to close out the game. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you've managed to pull that off, all you need to do is get a one KO on something like a Genesect, and that will be your sixth prize map. And, you know, looking at this from the outside, just looking at the list, you've got to think Azul here is a little bit of a favorite because you're playing those specific techs against Mew. But then again, everyone seems to be teching against Mew these days. And I keep thinking, well, now Mew fine. And no! It just doesn't stop winning. And Owen's coming in here, you know, 11 wins, one loss, three ties throughout the tournament so far. Clearly a phenomenal player. And this is a deck that just won't go away. So, yes, Azul seems on paper to have the answers to this deck. And we're going to be seeing him try and find them as we go through. But I think we need to, you know, we need to admit here that there's still a chance that Mew just will not go away. Maybe ever. Like, maybe we'll be here in six years' time and it's still just going to be Mew in Top Cut. Yeah, I've been calling Mew the cockroach of the format. It just <laughs> never seems to die. And sure enough, it's here once more. And it's, it's using this 1-1 one, one Aerodactyl V-Star. That's uh, generally that tech that you see there for the Lugia. Nice to see one of those pieces into the discard pile early on. Now you're just going to play with the, the 58 card deck, if you will, and try to just play as a, a typical Mew player here. Yeah, that Aerodactyl is not going to do much against this Lost Zone box deck, so you're going to be getting rid of that as soon as possible. We do see this Rotom phone lets you grab a card from the top five to leave on top, and then you're going to draw it with your Genesect. It's a fantastic combo. It means that if you're only drawing one card with your Genesect, you're actually drawing the best of the top five cards, which is just such a huge advantage here. Now, we do have the Genesect going to be drawing, um, well, the one card. Yep, <laughs> and, uh, it's gonna be a card to throw away with a quick ball. Down with the power tablet. Not really interested in the additional damage in this matchup. So often you'll already be taking the knockout with the Mew, the Max, and gonna just go for the uh, the play here to get some additional Pokemon in play. Holding onto that Judge for a later turn and can really start to work on some disruption later on too. Oh, okay. double VIP pass and a Kramamatic. That is about the best you could possibly hope for because the Battle VIP pass lets you get your perfect two Pokemon to fill out your bench. And then you've got Kramamatic that if you flip ahead gets you any card. And you've got the perfect card to throw away while playing Kramamatic. There you go. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we saw this from Pedro in Top 8. When you see Battle VIP passes and you already have a full bench, just throw them away. <laughs> it's, it's the best place to put them, right in the trash. 
Ah, oh, they are the ultimate discard or loss zone fodder when you've got a full bench or it's not turn one. And Kramamatic, you've got to give up an item card in order to do it. So that was about the best combination of free cards you could have gotten off of that Genesec. That was just absolutely wonderful. So now the question becomes, what do you want on the bench? And it seems like a pretty standard free Genesect, two Mew, one Oracorio. We've seen this a million times before. So now the question is, can you hit heads on the Kramomatic? And what are you going to grab if you do? Well, we're going to see it because it is a heads. Yeah, and then maybe going for that energy early on could be nice just to guarantee that so often you can find every other card in the deck except for one of those four double turbo energies. You're not going to see that. It discarded in any way from Azul's side. He doesn't care, so you can even play that energy down if you want to onto that Mew. Yeah, we do, and we pass over. And Vuro in there, that, that was about the best possible, the best possible start. Although talking of Battle VIP pass, there's at least one in Azul's hand here. And we've got, oh, there's Chorus's experiment. There's a lot of good stuff there. So Azul is not gonna be, not gonna be shy of a couple of actions this turn. Yeah, this is fantastic. It's, it gets to see just about everything he wants here on the opening turn. I'm gonna take a look through the deck, see all those energy cards that he plays. Every single one is going to be important here. Have to know all of the counts. We didn't see anything too detrimental in the prize cards here as well. So it's gonna be going after that typical strategy that you need to get your comp phase out, get that Radiant Greninja, and start to draw some cards, get cards into the Lost Zone, and eventually you can work on that early setup uh, maybe that early attack even with that Mirage Gate on the second turn. Yeah, that would be quite nice. I mean, this is what we want to see, right? We're in the top four of the international championships. We want to see good games where both players' decks play along, cooperate, and they get to do whatever they want. And that's how we're starting off here. Owen had a phenomenal turn one. And as all here, we got the Kumfei and the Radiant Greninja. Usually the two things we see from a battle VIP pass early with this deck. Again, that Zero Aura in the active is not ideal. It's not really what you want to see there. But this is not a bad start by any stretch. It looks like there might be a capture energy there to get another basic. There's a Comfey already in hand there that could be played. So hopefully we'll see a few flower selectings, a bit of dancing around here. And three Chorus Experiment to go along with it. So if he gets to hold on to this hand for a little while, which we know is likely not going to be the case, and uh, there's some great resources here. And ooh, speaking of great resources, there is uh, a lot of good cards in that hand that you're going to need to hold on to. Uh, looks like Drapion V found a little too early. Yeah, and you, you cannot get rid of it. I was going to say, Comfey is one of the options there because obviously that is, you know, you've already got a couple of them. You're good. Oh, you, you don't really want to drop the Ordinary Rod, but you do play two Ordinary Rods. So I think this is the right choice. But it feels bad because especially, you know, if th there's so many attackers here that might want to come back. You don't want to lose the ordinary rod early, but you kind of have to. You can see a world where the Cramorant is so valuable, especially getting the early damage down. This turn onto the Genesect V, you could potentially soften that up and then maybe work in a knockout on that Genesect by way of uh, either the, the Radiant Greninja or a Sableye later on. And then you're really just working on that Sky Seal Stone Drapion V strategy on the Mew V Max to close out the match. So early damage here could certainly uh, be relevant. And the good news is we do have four cards in the Lost Zone here. There is a Cramorant in hand for Rizal, so it does look that that spit innocently is absolutely going to be on the board here. And, you know, two-hit KOing with Cramorant. If you can ever get two prizes doing that, it is such an advantage in the game. And here, there's not actually a lot of real attackers for us all. It's a lot of support Pokemon, but this is what you're looking for. It is, yeah, you, you've got your Radiant Greninja there to draw cards, Comfey to draw cards, Oranguru just putting that Coruscant experiment back on top of the deck, knowing you're going to have it for next turn, even if you're, something like a Marnie comes down and just, we're seeing why is always one of the top players in the game here. The sequencing here is lovely. Yep, now just the decision to make here if you want to use the Cramorant to get some damage down now or if you want to potentially work in some of those additional comb phase. We did see the Orangro already and typically if the energy for the turn was going to be played, it was going to be that capture energy. So yeah, this looks like it's going to go with the, the slower setup here and pass over the turn. 
Yeah, no problem with that at all. Like we said, you just need a KO on the Janisect and the big Sky Seal Stone Drapion KO on the Mew. So you don't need to rush ahead for that early damage. It's nice to have a little bit of a poke and, you know, get that early damage on there. But the prize map doesn't demand that you do it. And Azul here's just got a nice setup of support Pokemon to keep just setting up his board, setting up his Lost Zone and getting ready for that big combo KO in a little bit. Yeah, Azul is ready to be judged at this stage. He's, he's got the capture energy that he held on to, and that's because if he ever is in a situation where he needs to find a Pokemon like that Drapion V at the right stage, he can go ahead and find it just because of this energy card. So uh, love to see the resources there being held on to, and it's just going to be a lot of work for Owen to maneuver against this excellent player. Yeah, absolutely. We do see the Rotom phone here. Let's you leave a card you want on the top of the deck. And they're just drawing it with the Genesect here, going up to six cards in hand. A lot of cards that move around, a lot of cards that can be used if you want to draw additionally with that Genesect V. However, uh, some of those resources are nice to see. That escape rope potentially could be solid at some stage or another, but early on, just looking to move this Genesect out of the active spot. And interestingly enough, Azul could have switched to Comfy for a Comfy, puts Azera Aura up instead, because of course we've said that's not kind of useful in any way in this matchup, so why not? Why not just put it up there, let Owen get the KO, and at least you've opened up a bench space for a Pokemon that's going to be a lot more useful as we go through this game. Yep, something that we haven't spoken about. On Owen's side, going for the triple Mew as opposed to the triple Genesect while having that Oracorio down means that there is potential for a Psychic Leap play if a lot of damage is left on the board. And maybe these two prize cards are more difficult to find for Azul than you potentially have access to those kind of plays and can avoid giving up prize cards in, in that way. Yeah, that Psychic Leap, such an important attack, being able to do 70 damage and shuffle back into the deck. A Mew V Mats can copy the Mew V on the bench. If you ever are damaged, you know, Mew V Mats gives up free prizes. That is a lot. So being able to just go back into the deck is a huge advantage. Just take those prizes off the board. And it, it's incredibly annoying for your opponent, but sometimes you just kind of want to be incredibly annoying to your opponent. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the name of the game, as, as <laughs> Owen's done that so often. Going to throw down that Forest Seal Stone and hold on to that for a little bit. I don't think there's any resources as you specifically need this turn. And, uh, usually the focus is going to be on hand disruption. Yeah. Absolutely. Now we all oh, thinking about it though. I was gonna say that V Star we, we saw the reaching out for it, not yet. And it is interesting. I thought it was free Genesect two Mew. It's actually two Genesect free Mew. And I think one of them might be so you've got that psychic leap left available because you need a Mew V on the bench to do so. We see the Forest Seal Stone here searching out any card. Did you catch what it was? Yeah, it was the uh the path to the peak there. So thinking about any ways to draw this hand up a little bit higher, that Radiant Greninja that can be shut down there, and uh, that's basically going to be one of the, the few options there from Azul to uh, to continue to fill this hand other than the Comfey's. Yeah, and the Comfey, you do have to have those switching options. You have to keep switching between them, so turning off that Genesect, is, uh, sorry, excuse me, that Radiant Greninja is quite a nice thing. We do see the KO with the Mew on the Zara Aura, so Owen takes the first prize here. But we are early in this game, and I think there's a few more prizes to be coming yet. Yep, this also is going to shut down the wild style of the Drapion V. If the combo was to be found here, we could have seen the Sky Steel Zone in combination with that. For the four prizes, honestly, at this point, maybe you would even take the three prize cards if you don't find uh, all of the right pieces. But that's going to be another piece that Azul has to figure out here. Yeah, it takes quite a lot. You need your Drapion V, you need your Sky Steel Stone. You need your answer to path to the peak at this stage. It, it's asking a lot, but, you know, Owen Yo used his V-Star power. Use that Forest Seal Stone, which is one shot throughout the entire game, just to get the path to the peak, just for this turn. And the, the reason was very simple. He had Mew out. And as soon as you put Mew VMAX down, you know that that play is on the board. It is a potential there. And you need to make... You need to try and avoid it for as long as possible. The problem is... Azul has done this. Like, I mean, how many times has Azul played this exact matchup against Mew? Uh, Dozens? 3,700, probably. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a huge his amount. testing group does a lot of testing. 
Well, you, I mean, you said yourself, spent all the time since coming to Melbourne just testing, getting together with friends and just testing over and over again. Azul is not going to be phased by that path to the peak. Might be another turn or two before you can pull off that drapping on combo, but he knows he's got time to do so. So it's really not a problem at this stage. And here's the bird keeper to go ahead and get that additional comfy into the active spot. Draw some more cards, fill the hand even further, and it doesn't even look like he's been judged at this point when you see all these <laughs> cards here. No, not at all. Battle VIP pass going into the lost zone of a flower selecting. You always love to see it. That is the worst card in your deck right now. It is, well, it literally does nothing because it's not turn one of the game. And now we've got seven in the lost zone. Out comes the Mirage Gate. And it looks like we might see, yeah, it's going to be on the Radiant Greninja here. And I kind of like this because you're just softening up a couple of Pokemon. And of course, I can see a 90 HP Pokemon there sitting on the bench, which doesn't have much protection right now. Yeah, that Oracorio there hanging out. If you don't have the Sky Seal Stone, then of course you can always work on that Pokemon there. And uh, it's uh, one of those tricky situations you see here with uh, how do you really work around the prize map in a situation like this? We'll see what Azul's, Azul's decision is going to be here. Yeah, although that Oracorio should actually protect itself from being right. KO'd annoyingly. It's got 90 HP, but the ability does stop damage even on the bench. So as fun as it would be to KO, it's just 70 onto each of the Genesects. A lot of these abilities we see reduce damage in the active. Oracorio is actually always on. It's protecting all of your Fusion Strike Pokemon. And it's not your other Pokemon. It is itself and all the others, whether they're active or on the bench. It's, it's a really powerful ability. It's far more wide ranging than we're used to from these kind of abilities. But those Genesects here, and Azul's basically going, you know what? I, I could just ignore the Mu V Max and take out a bunch of two prizes. Like that is an option for me. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're not able to find all of the pieces for the Drapion V and the Sky Seal Stone and the Counter Stadium to the Path to the Peak, then you always need to start thinking about where you're going to find these other prices. And sure enough, those Genesects are going to be great targets, but I still think that four prizes is going to be eventually on the table. Just the ordering of it can be important as you don't want to walk into the Roxanne. Oh, double, double tails Cylene. on Silene, not what you're looking for. But... That Radiant Greninja play might just have been a bit of a, a placeholder play. Like, look, I can't get the combo now, and there's nothing else I really want to do. So I either do 2 times 70 with my Radiant Greninja, or I do 90 with Cramorant. I'll just do the Greninja play. And maybe I just ignore this damage and do the Drapping on play in a minute anyway. Or maybe in a few turns time, this ends up being relevant. And essentially, it's just opening up more options, more ways to win the game. But Owen, of course, does just get the return KO on that Radiant Greninja, which, of course, takes that draw power off the board. And yeah, Path to the Peak's down now, but in future turns, it might not be. But it, it, you're still not going to have access to it now. It is unfortunately gone for the moment. You'd have to get an Ordinary Rod to try and recover it into the deck and search it out later. It's possible, but awkward. Although, the way is all looking at his discard pile yeah i was gonna say it looks like he might have an ordinary rod ready to go oh that's a, a nice card to find here is we'll be able to get those psychic energies into the deck here and that will be fantastic if we see some additional cards added into the lost zone for that sableye to start working on that genesect if you can remove one of those from play then of course lines up so well with the drapion v and the sky seal stone to take out the mu v max and the numbers, of course, work absolutely perfectly. Sableye drops 12 damage counters. 70 that you've already done, plus the 12 damage counters is exactly 190. And yes, the Oracorio might be reducing damage done by 20, but Sableye doesn't do damage. Sableye drops damage counters, and that is not the same in the Pokemon TCG. Ooh. Wow. What we seeing? Oh, what my seeing? goodness. All right, it's getting too good. Oh, that's actually too many pieces. This is weird. Yeah, the, there's a... Uh... There's the Drapion V, the Sky Seal Stone, the Sableye, and I think one other important piece too, uh, the Training Court. So that's tricky. Actually, has to throw away the Sableye. Oh, does play two Sableye is important to note. Not all of them do, but there is a second Sableye in here. But you kind of want the Sableye. The Sableye's a really good attacker this turn. I mean, Unless you've got the Drapion combo. He's, he's got the Drapion combo, but 
you usually want to wait so that you don't get Roxanne. But I mean, that's that's four prize cards. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, well, you, you're absolutely right. You want to do the Sableye KO on the Genesect now, and then you want the Drapion combo next turn. But sometimes, if, if you wait too long to play around the Roxanne, you might not have the pieces next turn. If you've got the pieces, sometimes you have to just go for the Wombo combo now and just cross your fingers you don't get disrupted too bad. You still only need a Sableye and a Psychic Energy to win the game next turn. Looks like Mirage Gate gonna be used here. Maybe that's just uh, an additional energy so that Comfe can find a way to retreat. Yeah, this is retreating energy here. There's nothing else you're doing for. Th you don't th like th the whap down? Pardon? You don't like the Orangaroo whap down right here? I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of it, Carl, if I'm honest with you. No, I, I don't like the whap down. Oh, well, that's unfortunate to hear. I, I really had a lot of respect for you going into this match. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your first mistake. <laughs> Oh, we do see that energy there, and I don't see much else. I think it's Wombo Combo time. Yeah, it's got to be the Wombo Combo time here. It's, it's always something about using Mirage Gate to get one energy as a pivot option, which we've seen a lot. It's just, it's not really what you want to use the card for. And if you're Owen here, you, you need the Roxanne and Crossing Fingers. Azul has played this absolutely phenomenally, putting those Genesect down within Sableye range, getting the Wombo Combo on the board, and now it's going to be a case of, if I get Sableye and a Psychic Energy at the same time, I guarantee to win this game. Or indeed, if I get a Boss's Orders, I can KO you with Cramorant. There are a lot. No, Cramorant's not quite doing enough at this stage. That would be 10 damage short. Yep, the Kramer in. Oh, that's very annoying. But there's still a bunch of options here. So now the question is, can Owen stop us all just racing to the end? There is the training court, which, of course, was very important. Sky Seal Stone, you do not want to forget to do that. And uh, we actually see an energy going on, Comfy, just for an extra pivot option in the future. But we're going to see Drapion come down here, KO the Mu V Max, and take four all prizes in one go with one attack for zero energy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, we know why this card was put into the Pokemon TCG, and it's because of the deck that it's facing right now. It is a excellent counter to the power of Mu V Max, taking four prize cards and lining up to potentially close out here with just Psychic Energy and a Sableye to remove one of those Genesect V from play. Yeah, I mean, it really is quite simple. The, the, the Drapion card was really obviously designed as a Mew counter. It was incredibly blatant. And a lot of people went, well, Drapion's here. Mew's done. Bye, Mew. Yeah, bye, Mew. And, and like, that came out a while ago now. And, and we're still here. And Mew is still one of the best decks in the format. We see a Kramomatic. It is a flip we didn't see. Must have been a heads or else this is a very bad <laughs> deck search. Yeah, that would definitely be pretty illegal. And this is why you wait on the Drapion play if you can. Azul obviously could not. Just saw way too many valuable cards off of the Colrus' experiment that turn. And we see the Roxanne. Yeah, and it had to be. There was no there was no prizes for guessing what was going to be gotten off of the Kramomatic there. It was always going to be the Roxanne. And this is going to put Azul down to a two-card hand. And there is a chance here that Azul just draws nothing. And it's, it's not for long. If Azul draws nothing for a couple of turns, that, that's the game. Azul's only got, like, two turns to try and pull this win off here. Yep, that's absolutely right. This Mew VMAX should be... Able to take the knack out on the Drapion V fairly easy. And it looks like you're even going to draw some cards before using the Roxanne here, as you will be drawing up to six. This feels comfortable just using one of those now and seeing some resources. They end up being okay. Mew VMAX. Yeah, we like the VMAX giving you a... Well, to be fair, if you... If your active one goes down, you're done anyway, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, you get to thin it out. That's pretty good. That is nice to be thinning it out. You know, we've got a quick ball, but you've got a full bench. So some more thinning out. Kramomatic would be huge. It is a head again. Now, you need to be a bit careful with a the roll there. I'm not sure that die actually rolled three. There is a rule that needs to roll over three times. That is an actual rule in the rule book. So I think that might be the discussion going on here. I'm not sure that die actually rolled enough. 
So that might be a discussion. It was not very much. Yep, they're going to have a quick discussion over what happened here to see if there's something that needs to be done here. Do we need to re-roll the die? Or is this discussion... Oh, this discussion's over not placing the damage with the Drappy on V. That makes a little more sense. Yeah, that makes a lot yeah. more sense. Where was the six damage counters have to be... 60 damage has to be placed there. And yeah, you, you should really place it before the prizes, although... It depends if it's going to be any kind of penalty. I mean, the, the thing to remember about penalties are they escalate as you go up through. So the fact that we're in the top four of an international championships, it means that the penalties do escalate very quickly. So that is something to watch. If anybody is watching and thinks that, you know, some of the penalties seem quite high, you've got to remember that we are, you know, we are high up in the tournament here. Well, we do see the Lost City played down here. That means that the Drepion V will not be able to come back up into play at any stage is going to go to the Lost Zone here. So definitely going to limit the resources that Azul has in order to take the KO here. Because he's going to be looking for basically that Sableye and the Psychic Energy uh, to remove the Genesect. And th that's about it. I don't see a Pokemon attacking into Mew VMAX successfully here. No. We do see the Mew here. We got... Oh. It's, it's, it's awkward. Yep. Awkward at this stage. <laughs> I mean, there's no energy yet. <laughs> no, well, that's what I mean. That's why it's awkward. <laughs> Double turbo energy, and, and you're looking really, really good here. And unfortunately, it's, it's, it's just not there. Um, one thing we do need to bear in mind, Owen actually prized the big parasol here. And that is a little bit of an issue. That would protect you from the Sableye. The problem is there is already a Genesect with a tool attached with seven damage counters on. So even if he had the big parasol, there's still a Genesect that would be a good target for the Sableye there. So unfortunately, you know, that, that would have been nice. But I kind of love that it's all put two Genesects in harm's way. That might be one of the things he was thinking. Go on then, big parasol, both of them, I dare you. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to lost uh, vacuum away the one that are, has the forest seal stone on it. And that's just asking for so many resources that aren't being used appropriately. But we need to see this double turbo. And sure enough, Owen does find it, finds two of them and says, oh, good. I get to play Pokemon for a little longer. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have any more uh, great cards in that hand. Yeah, worth pointing out, Big Parasol actually goes on your active and protects all of your Pokemon. But the Mew has a choice bout anyway, so it still wasn't going to be a, a tool that was going to help, unfortunately. But I did want to correct, I said that slightly wrong there. Wanted yeah. to be pedantic. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely could come into play in, a, in the next, the oh, next absolutely. game, of course. So great to note there. And we do see, I mean, finding the Colrus' experiment after being Roxanne, that is incredible here for Azul. But I didn't, I don't know if it saw all the right resources. At least the scoop up net will be able to help out here, too. Yeah, that's going to be able to help pick up the Comfey, put another one up there, do some flower selecting. Interesting, the one that went up was not the one that had the energy on it. Is he retreated this turn already? Yeah, there's a switch cart as well in the hand, so that can help out. And the energy for the turn could potentially just be the capture energy if you yeah. wanted. Or you just discard it with the Radiant Greninja to draw a few more cards. Finds oh, the psychic, psychic energy, psychic though. Energy. That's kind of important. Huge. And I think, has he got the Sableye in hand already? He does. He does. So we've got the Switch Cart. So that's all we need here. Switch Cart the Sableye into the active. Drop the 12 damage counters on the Genesect. And Azul, is that, is that game two? Uh, it should just be the opener there. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> that, that one went up very, very quickly there. And I was like, wait, was that game two? Uh, but yeah. no, Azul takes a 1-0 lead up here. And that was a very, very, very interesting game. And Azul played that absolutely beautifully. Set it up there to take that one game to, to zero lead. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. That was uh, definitely a great showing of this deck here for Azul. Did exactly what he wanted to do, even if it was in the wrong order. It's not his fault. It's just the way the cards fell that time. The Colrus' experiment was certainly an exciting one to witness as he found everything that he needed and was able to take four prize cards in one turn. Yeah, and it was the wrong turn, like we said. It was a turn too early there. 
but it didn't really matter. And, and here's the thing, we see this so often when the great players are playing, we knew that it was a turn early and Owen could punish for the Roxanne. And then the next turn, that is exactly what happened. Owen had the Roxanne and it's always kind of interesting. When I was a newer player, I was like, when I play these good players, they always have exactly what they need at the right time. How do they always have what they need at the right time? And then I played a bit longer and I got a bit better at the game and I was like, oh yeah, they literally spend the entire game setting this up. They don't use resources early that they might need later, just in case they make sure that these plays are available later on in the game. They thin their deck of cards they don't need to increase their chance of drawing it later. And it's not some coincidence. These great players like Owen, like Azul, they set their deck up to give themselves the best possible chance of having what they need later on in the game. High percentage plays. That's what we love to see here on the big stage. Do see that Radiant Greninja prized on the side of Azul. One Mew B Max prized on the other side for Owen. And he is playing the three copies. As we've seen some players skimping on that list going to the 4-2. So, won't be punished there. Now, now we do see that Oracorio starting off that. We've got a quick ball straight away, which is going to be, it looks like, for a Mew. And the question here is, how many Mew, how many Genesect can you get? Now, we only got a super quick look at Owen's hand. I didn't see a battle VIP pass there. Yeah, I didn't see what was all in the hand there. So, it's probably going to take a minute to uh, resolve that, as, of course, this is the opening deck search. Now, all he's going to give me a quick peek, and it looks like a second quick ball potentially in the hand there, too. So, could see some cards played, but this is not the ideal setup. Surely, you would love to see that battle VIP pass, maybe a Cramomatic, something to thin out the hand even quicker, and then start to draw up with those Genesex. Yeah, and that's always a plan. You want to try and make sure that you've got as few cards in hand as possible, play them all out, get a bunch of Genesect down, and, and just draw a lot of cards. I mean, you said something like 10 cards in the discard on turn one. That shows you've had a good turn as a Mew player. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, and it's usually a little tougher when you're the player that's going first as you don't get to also use a supporter to help out in that strategy, but it's still definitely very possible as we see already four cards being used here, getting down that Genesect V and it's going to need a little bit of help off the top of the deck, it looks like. Yeah, Genesect draw. Genesect's a great draw engine, but it takes a minute to get going. It draws until you've got as many cards in hand as you've got Fusion Strike Pokemon on the field, which means right now we're free on the field. You're Mew, you're Oricorio, you're Genesect. You're basically drawing until you've got three cards in hand. So you play the Power Pad and you attach the energy and you're still only drawing two cards. Although Owen does get that Roxanne back in the deck. We saw how good it was last game. Owen wants that available again here. Yeah, has the choice build as well. So it's going to be the full three now. And nice. are they, oh, they're okay. But the option is to throw away your big parasol with a Cramomatic. I'm not doing that. And we saw last game if that choice bout wasn't on the Mew and Big Parasol was instead, that could have made a huge difference at the tail end of that game. So, yeah, that's... um. That's an interesting one. You, you really want to use Cramomatic, but imagine if you get rid of your big parasol and you hit tails. That's just, you can't do that. Azul, however, does have battle VIP pass. Yeah, this is very nice. Always the card that you're looking for on the opener. I'm sure Owen would like to borrow that right now. Get a couple more Genesec V into play here, but did at least get the Mew down. Has the double turbo energy to go along with it, so we'll be able to get some early attacks off. But you're going to be looking for a lot of help. You need to find that judge. You need to get Azul in an awkward position where maybe he doesn't have the right hand to get cards into the Lost Zone. Yeah, and that is that's not what you're looking for. Turn one going second. I mean, four, I think, is a good baseline. Four gets your Cramorant, uh, your Cramorant able to attack. Four is your two flower selecting and one Chorus's experiment. It's, it's not an amazing turn one, but that's kind of what I'm looking for as a baseline. Four cards in the Lost Zone, turn one. Couple of flower selecting, Chorus's experiment, start getting set up, and hopefully end the turn on a Crammer and Poke. Although we did see in game one, Azul was in a, a position where could have attacked with Crammer and didn't need to. Would rather just spend the time setting up his board a little bit better. Yep, just drawing as many cards as possible to help out here. Looks like a decision to be made with the Snorlax or the Capture Energy. Gonna go with the Snorlax. It can be a way to knock out a Pokemon like a Genesect V if you have access to uh, a Choice Belt later on. 
So we'll keep that in the back of our mind as he holds on to that. Oh, more flower selecting here. We're going to get our third card in the Lost Zone. And this is wonderful. You're hitting stuff like Zera Aura and Manaphy, these tech Pokemon that are not necessary in this matchup at all. You do have to drop a Water Energy. We've actually got four cards in the Lost Zone without playing a supporter. But does us all have a supporter to play here? He's going to use the Quick Ball here. Maybe... Would love to have a card like that Radiant Greninja now to help out, but that isn't the prizes this time around. Yeah, that is not ideal. It's not a deck that plays Luminion. It's not that kind of deck, unfortunately. So no Luminion, no Radiant Greninja. The good news is you've been able to do a lot of work with these Comfy, and that's lovely. And you've got your Cramorin as an attacker. And it looks like with this different setup, this game is always going to go, you know what? Yeah, may maybe Cramorant is the play this time. And actually, the Cramorant will get a KO on that Oracorio in the active, because even with the reduction of 20, it should still go and get that KO. It will yep. do exactly the right number. Yep, that would line up fairly well. Of course, when you're working on uh, the math to avoid the Roxanne, that no longer is going to come into play. But I, Azul has already proven that that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> you can just go ahead and continue to attack into your opponent. And uh, I mean, we sense weakness here as well, right? You're looking at your opponent. They've only got the three Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. You remove one of those. You potentially remove the way for Genesect to draw into the right card to help out of this situation. And it is quite nice to not have to go for the entire game. I mean, for us all, it's nice to not have your damage reduced by 20. For us, it's nice to not have to factor that in when we're doing all our calculations. <laughs> now, Cramomatic does come down with an Ultra Ball, and it is a Tails. Oh, that is not good at all. So we see the Mew Max being evolved up. We see Genesect drawing a single card. Owen is one game down and is not having a huge amount of luck here. He's playing around Drappy on V. I mean, right now, wild style, you'd, uh, you'd still need to have a couple energies to go along with it. But we could definitely see Mirage Gate <laughs> along with uh, the, the Drapion V to take the knockout here. Uh, I'm sure Rizal would not mind at all having that Mirage Gate if it meant getting the four prize KO. So we've got some more flower selecting here. We see a choice bout going into the Lost Zone. That's a Drapion V. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. I think we're always going to take that card. Yeah, I, I think probably a lot of the time. We do see another Cramorant coming down. So it's all here not having everything he wants and going, you know what? You've had a bad start. I'm not drawing amazingly, but I think I can just kind of poke away with Cramorant for a minute, and this is going to work out quite nicely. Now, is there a possibility here? Oh, we would need a choice bout to get the KO with the Snorlax, but that is all a moot point at this stage because it looks like the Mew is just going to take out the Snorlax. Well, I don't know which attack Mew used. I'm assuming he's used Fusion Strike System or the oh. Techno Blast, so it's just going to be a pass. It of the is going to be a pass. Yeah. Can't take it out. Of course, that Techno Blast says you cannot use it two <laughs> turns in a row. Azul's ready to pass the turn right back. Has nothing to do. Oh no. We appear to have, uh, have hit a stalemate. <laughs> well, Owen keeps drawing into cards where he can't thin down low enough to use a fusion strike system. And he's just contemplating, well, is it worth knocking out the Snorlax? I, I need prize cards. I need to do stuff, right? Uh, yeah, basically. Because <laughs> nope. Oh. <laughs> Going to pass the turn right back. And that Snorlax is a decent attacker, but it's also got a decently high retreat cost, and it is just stuck in the active. It seems like it's been a while since I saw a good old-fashioned boss's orders stall. I, I really like the, the, the hand motions of both these players. It's, very, it's a very aggressive throw of the hand to signify, <laughs> please draw nothing and keep this going for me, please. I feel like gusting Pokemon up and then kind of trying to buy a ton. I feel like that was a point that was a really popular play. Yeah. But nowadays, everyone plays so much, so many switching cards. You know, switching cards are so prevalent, it's just not that good a play. Well, Owen's bringing it back. Yeah, I mean, we've got decks that grab upwards of four energies out of your deck at any point. There's scoop-up nets all over the place. Typically, this strategy isn't a thing anymore. You can't get away with it, but <laughs> Azul has the perfectly incorrect cards in his hand that he's stuck there. Finally, though, we are going to see this escape rope, and the gameplay will be back. Yeah, this is good. We got the escape rope, and that's going to allow him to go into a Mew. It, it means you've got to pivot every, every time, which is quite nice. And we do see the big parasol being attached, 
And this is kind of nice, because that MUV is going to be a MUV Max, one would imagine, in the future. So that's going to give that protection to the rest of you know the field from stuff like Sableye, which is quite nice. And now we've got a Lost Vacuum taking the, uh, the Air Balloon off of the Comfey here. And now we've got a second Genesect, and now Owen's deck is working a bit more like we expect these two. Yep, using those Genesects to try to draw into a few more options, and it looks like there is another ball search there. Oh, actually, the Cram-O-Matic. So this is an important flip. Does oh, get the heads, heads there. that is big. Can continue this turn, draw a few more cards if he so chooses. See if the Genesect is grabbed immediately, or if any other card in his hand isn't important. Maybe you could grab the Quick Ball or something like that and help thin out a little more. Or do you just go for the disruption here and try to go for a supporter? Because we haven't seen one of those in a minute. You haven't, but your opponent hasn't been doing much the past few turns. If you're Owen, you think has always got a bad hand. So playing someone like a Marnie or a Judge at this stage, it, it wouldn't be my first choice. Just because, and, and sooner or later, your opponent is going to draw out of it. Like, it always happens. But I'm just going to wait and see if they do. I don't want to give them any help here. Yeah, I do like seeing that Genesec added to the hand now. And sure enough... Rotom Phone going to try to help out a little more. If Azul ever draws out of this, there is that judge option. But we, we've seen that the switching can occasionally be nice. The rest of the cards, eh, you don't need too much else from this point forward. Maybe uh, uh, one last Pokemon onto the bench could help out in drawing all of the cards. Yeah, at some point you're going to need a new Mu V Max and a new double turbo energy, but it doesn't necessarily have to be this turn. Cramorant is not working on a two-hit KO. But Snorlax could, if there's another choice spell, and we need to double check it to see actually how many Azul plays here. So there are two, so one is in the Lost Zone, but there is another one available. So Snorlax choice spell would get a KO on that Mew after the Cramorant attack. It's, it's not exactly ideal, but it is a route to go and get that KO. It wouldn't work if Oricorio was still on the field, but Oricorio isn't. Now draws up the hand there with the Fusion Strike system. It's been a long turn here trying to find a solution after such a slow opener. Looks like the Quick Ball is going to be selected. Genesec down probably means that Mew is the option as a, a, you don't want to go for an Aerodactyl here. No, I think it's probably at the point where Aerodactyl is not going to do much good. Darn. I know. At least it's a nice card to be fought for discard if it needs to be. But Owen has worked into a really respectable board here. Like in the previous game, we've got free Mew. Now, instead of two Genesects and an Oracorio, we've got free Genesect. Well, that's going to give Owen a lot of options, both in terms of just drawing a whole heap of cards, but also in terms of having backup Mews. We see Grammatic. It's off the screen again, but it is a tail, so no card of choice there, I'm afraid. Yep, and... As those Genesects all tilted to the side, they are all done. It looks like Mew is going to move into the active spot here to take that knockout on the Cramorant. And that is a lot of prize cards in the active position there. Technoblast going to be the choice here. Yeah, and if Zul can get a good attacker rolling, it, it is possible, like I say. The Snorlax can do it. Now we have six in the Lost Zone. This Comfy is then going to put a seventh card in the Lost Zone. That is going to activate Mirage Gate. And you don't really need too much at this stage. We need an energy, a Mirage Gate, and the lone choice spell. And that's going to be the issue. The fact there's only one of them and it's an item card, it's, it's going to be hard to find. But that would allow Snorlax to get this KO on the Mew and open up just KO Genesect for the win. Or maybe you can get the Snorlax rolling with a boss's orders and just take out a Genesect anyway. Although it would still need a choice spell, to be fair. Yep, well, we could just see the energies come down onto the Snorlax and then use the Drapion V that's in hand. You could go ahead and grab those prize cards right now, have that secondary attacker lined up, play it similarly to the opening game one, where you just hope that the rest of your single prize Pokemon can get the job done here after Drapion does its job. Yeah, and I think there's a decent shout. Azul seems to be in quite in control of this game. Owen has the prize lead at the moment, you know, taken two to Azul's one. But I think the big point here is that Azul could very easily this turn be going up to four prizes taken. And Owen's deck is one of these ones that really relies on Mew. And if your opponent is already starting to have options down, that's bad. But if your opponent can just go, I'm going to ignore you, Mew, I can take out a Genesect for the win, that is also pretty bad a lot of the time. 
see what the option is here for Azul now. It does have that Sky Seal Stone in hand in combination with the Drapion V, so could see a ton of prize cards here. Go down to one prize if you wanted to. Has a few other cards here, and of course, plenty of Kompes that haven't used flower selecting just yet. But I don't know if the switching effects are around. No, and it, it, it is interesting, you know, you, you don't really need that extra prize on the Sky Seal Stone here, because you're probably going to have to KO a Pokemon V anyway. Although, one thing you could do here, you could actually KO the Mew with Snorlax. That would be within range if there were a, if there was a gusting on his all side of the board here. And then you could just KO the Mew V Max next turn. But, yeah, it does look like the Drapion's coming down with the Sky Seal Stone. And that extra prize is unlikely to be a huge issue here, but it does at least mean you draw an extra prize card. If, if you're going to be in range of a Roxanne, you might as well have an extra prize card before you start here. Yeah, resources are cool. Go ahead and get as many <laughs> as you can here. Also, don't forget to put down the 60 damage this time with Dynamic Tail, and uh, that's going to work out just fine. To sees a ton of cards and is going to finally see that Radiant Greninja along with a few energies. Yeah, just one prize remaining. I feel fairly confident Owen is not going to be playing a one prize Pokemon at any point from here on in. Now we see the double turbo on the Mew V, which must mean there is a V Max. Oh no, actually, there might just not be an attacker. There is, however, that Forest Seal Stone, which could guarantee the V Max, or there's just an Ultra Ball, which will probably do it a bit more easily. Yep, that means that we could see the Roxanne targeted by the Forest Seal Stone. Yep. Honestly, you could probably work in another Genesec draw before that and see if you can get a little lucky, too. So plenty of options here for Owen. He knows exactly what he needs to do. Get that Drapion V into the Lost Zone by way of Lost City. Get your opponent onto a two-card hand and hope that their confis do not find good cards. And it's never great. Like, when that's your plan, when your plan is, I'm going to put you down to two cards and cross my fingers. It's, it's never really what I'm looking for. But sometimes, sometimes it's the best you can do. Sometimes you have to do the desperation play. That's right. Well, I already had the Roxanne in the hand, so gets to play that down. Still have access to two Fusion Strike systems here before eventually taking that knockout on the Drapion V. And, and the Forest... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you there. The Forest Seal Stone, it wasn't used for Roxanne, so yeah. it's still absolutely in play. So if there's another piece that Owen is particularly looking for, could grab it. I mean, honestly, what Owen really wanted this turn was the Mew Max the double turbo energy, and the Roxanne. And all of that has been gotten. All of that has gone and been grabbed. So that that sky, uh, the Forest Seal Stone is absolutely there. I'm just not sure what Owen really wants. You've even got Big Parasol just in case Sableye starts trying to do awkward things. It does have that power tablet, so we will have enough damage to knock out the Drapion V here. Going to go down to two prize cards. Owen's just considering... Every single player, do we need to get down this, this next UV here? Don't know if it really matters too much. No, because if you lose your UV max, you're getting KO'd. You will, you know, you've, you, need either, you need to reset your attack. So you either need to retreat and switch, or you need just a second UV max and an energy so that you can, you know, really chain those attacks. You, there is another UV here. No. False alarm. <laughs> no, it's there. It is there. It is. Look at that. But no, I, I agree with you. Essentially, Azul has got one turn to try and take out one of the Genesect. Or, or Owen is probably going to win. Well, no, actually, because he would need to take two prizes still. So Azul's going to have two turns. Two turns to KO a Genesect. And Owen's just going to be taking two prizes here, then two single prizes. And that's going to be it. That's going to be the game. So it's essentially a two-turn clock for Azul to try and go after one of those Genesect or even try and two-hit KO a Mew. And it could be Snorlax here. Yeah, Snorlax definitely looking like a great asset to have, as you could potentially work in one of those knockouts on uh, one of these bench Pokemon. Perhaps there's going to be access to a card like Escape Rope to help out in a situation like this. You don't always have to have... Uh, the gusting effect like that boss's orders. And if you can target down one of these uh, smaller hit point Pokemon, find the choice belt, then you're going to be in a fantastic spot. You really are. And one of the things about benching another Mew, Snorlax needs a damage modifier to KO the Genesect. You're only hitting 180. Doesn't to KO the Mew V. So there was a chance for him to potentially evolve the Mew V Max 
and then not have a Muvi on the bench. It's only a very small play, but this does potentially open the door for us all to gust up the Mu V, put an energy on the Snorlax, and end the game right there and then. Oh, there's wow. a choice bout anyway. That is a nice card. Yep, uh, Azul has found some pretty solid resources. Also holding on to that scoop up net as well. So gonna be able to see a few more cards here with the Confe. Can he find a card like that escape rope to potentially help out here? Sees another uh, scoop up net. Gonna look at the ordinary rod potentially. Uh, I don't think you need that. No, I think at this stage of the game, the Pokemon you've got or the Pokemon you've got, it is down to whether you can actually pull off these attacks. It looks like it's up to Snorlax at this point. And we really just need an energy in a boss's orders. And that, that's like it. An energy on the Snorlax with which to attack. But there is the boss's orders. So that's <laughs> kind of big. So as long as we've got an energy for the Snorlax and a way to get comfy out the active, Azul is going to be heading into the finals here. That we there we see the choice belt. There we see the energy. There we see the scoop up there. So the boss's orders brings up anything and Snorlax takes a KO and puts us all into the finals of the Oceania International Championships. Wow, what a way to close things out here. What a game. Snorlax taking a huge knockout and that is going to do it. Azul finding his way to the finals of an international championship once more. You know, it's, uh, it's something that you get addicted to, I suppose. He's doing a really good job at this and uh, what a, what a great player. What a great match that we have between both of these amazing talents. Oh, that was, that was a really, really good game. And I, I just love how that was set up. I love how both players played. I love what Owen did to try and frustrate. And we said at the beginning that was a bit of a rough matchup. Azul's deck has been tailor-made to, uh, to beat a couple of decks, one of which is Lugia, one of which is Mew. Azul is really set up to beat Mew in a way that Mew just isn't set up to beat Lost Box. But I think we have to give it to both players. They're very well played. But I think we watched those two games. Azul seemed to have the advantage on paper. And when the game played out, that was the better deck. And I think we could have replayed that game a bunch. And I think Azul probably would have won a fair bit more often. That was just Azul's game right there. Yeah, you can play it perfectly from both sides, and I feel like Azul certainly would come out on top. More often than not, it's just a, it just lines up so well. You, uh, being able to potentially avoid the Roxanne, I mean, that was with walking into the Roxanne every single time, and it was still <laughs> completely fine. I can only imagine what the games look like when you actually take the Genesec knockout on turn two <laughs> or so, and then you just uh, take all four prizes and shake their hands, because that has to feel pretty good. Yeah, and the other things to bear in mind, like if we know that Azul is trying to KO the Genesect and then get the four prize turn, well, Owen knows that as well. So Owen is going to be trying to play around there. One, of course, interesting.